glad you could join me in my kitchen. I want to show you another fast and easy muscle recipe that lends itself more to a Mediterranean style uh, mussels than a French style and equally as fast, equally as good, and equally as easy. And so let's get cooking. All right, I have mussels that I've already cleaned. All I did was rinse them because there are no beards to take off of these. Um, I think they're probably Prince Edward Island mussels, PEIs as they call them. And what we're going to do is dump those in a pot. I have a pan set to high heat because the mussels are stone cold. To that, I'm going to add some sliced onion, about a quarter to a half of a large onion or one good sized small one. And then we're going to add some fresh chopped parsley. And I am going to add some thin sliced garlic. Or you could put this through a garlic press. Or you could mince it. But this is fast and it's easy. If you're not quite as handy with a knife, then I would strongly suggest a garlic press. That's pretty easy. And also it doesn't trash the cutting board because one thing you don't want to do is cut anything on a board um, other than garlic unless you scrub it down. If you were to go uh, cutting anything on a board that you've cut garlic on, it picks up the flavor of the garlic for sure. So in the case of pastry, doughs and stuff like that, bad combination. Especially if you're doing dessert stuff. So anyway, garlic goes in. I put in three good sized cloves. I'm gonna put in a sprinkle or what's probably the equivalent about an eighth of a teaspoon of eight to a quarter teaspoon of some dried thyme because it's cold out and I'm not going to go pick thyme if I even have any now. I'm going to put in a half a jar, well actually we'll put the whole jar in, of some tomatoes that I can. I can them with fresh basil and um, uh, garlic, fresh garlic and so I'm just going to cut those ever so slightly. And then I'm going to add some cream sherry. Um, I really like cream sherry or uh, dry sack. Really good. The sherry is wonderful. You could do wine, but this one's a little different. Try it with sherry. You won't regret it. And then we're going to put maybe the equivalent of like two tablespoons of butter which is only really about a tablespoon a person on the top and then what we're going to do is put a lid on this I've got it on high we'll put the lid on wait for the liquid oh my god it smells so good already uh, wait for the liquid to come to a boil and wait for the mussels to open up which really shouldn't take more than five minutes tops well it's been about a minute minute and a half so let's take a look see what's going on under here Oh look, well it is boiling on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is gently turn over the top muscles to the bottom and the bottom bring up to the top and the ones on the bottom are already starting to open. Now I like to use this size pot to cook mussels or something that's on the flat side as opposed to this size stock pot that's really deep because by the time you get to the very bottom of them the mussels are going to be just torched beyond belief they're going to turn into a little buckshot if you use something larger and more shallow and if it's only one or two people you can sort of do them in a large saute pan too just make sure you have a lid to cover them because they come to the boil faster and anyway these are starting to open up, you can see, but I'm going to give them just another minute and put the lid on. And these will be done in probably less than a minute, so you can see how fast this goes. Yes, these are looking really good. They are almost all completely open. The onion has wilted nicely. The broth smells really good. If you use a red tomato, I used yellow because that's just what I happen to have in my pantry from yellow tomatoes that I can. 
then um, if you use a red tomato, it's a really pretty color. Well, not that this isn't. And I'm not adding any salt and pepper because as the mussels do come from salt water, um, they, once they open up, they add enough broth or they add enough liquid on their own to not have to add any salt. And so I'm not adding any lemon because the tomato will also add uh, a little bit of acid. So you really don't need any lemon in these either. You could add capers to this. Not necessary, you could. Take the mussels out and like the French style mussels, uh, you could add some salmon to the bottom of the pan after the mussels are out or shrimp or scallops and that would equally be as good but all right so these are clearly done uh, and did it take even five minutes I don't think so I'm going to turn these off and we'll take them over and put them in a bowl and we're going to give them a taste all right here we are let's let's plate these these are looking exceptional so you can see that it only took a couple of minutes I think what takes the longest amount of time is to slice the onion and chop the parsley. But other than that, and then rinsing the mussel too, other than that, this just is really, really fast. So I'm putting these in the bowl with, of course, plenty of broth because that is really good liquor as they call it to drink and then because eye appeal is so important we're going to put a little chopped parsley on that and now gosh to eat this with a little French bread little baguettes or to eat it with that I think we're gonna slice off a little piece of bread up for this and then what I like to do, oh, my little love muffin, she loves mussels. Chloe just thinks mussels are wonderful. She likes the bread dipped in the broth, too. But anyway, taking the bread, dipping in the broth, oh my God, is that better than the mussel? I don't know what to say. But you can sort of see that these are nice, plump, meaty, they're not dried out. They didn't turn into buckshot because I did not overcook them. Um, wow, they're really tasty. So, as fried chicken is to southerners, eating it with your fingers, so is a mussel to us that are from the East Coast, eating them with your fingers, and you use the mussel for a spoon to drink the broth. So many times I go out and see people with the cute little cocktail forks, little pinkies in the air, eating mussels and think, oh my God, you're missing the good part. You know, the, the um, broth usually ends up back in the kitchen. They have no idea what they're missing. So anyway, well, that's really good. The sherry is a nice mellow kind of a flavor to it. And yeah, I hope you try this because one, it's easy, two, it's really good and really satisfying, and you might find that you too enjoy it. All right, thanks for joining my kitchen. Afterthought time, these are excellent. I don't know which is better, the broth or the muscle. You know, when I was uh, a young girl being brought up and we'd go get steamers all the time, the, we always, meat muscle, or steamers were always served with the broth for a little dipping liquid to get the sand off of them and then a little lemon a little butter but the broth was so good to drink afterwards we always drank the broth out of a coffee mug and so as the broth is to a steamer this broth is to the mussels and it's excellent so anyway that's all for now one more thing I might add is that if you have extra mussels, as I will, and the broth, put them into a container, refrigerate them, and then the next day you can take the mussels out of the shell or gently, very gently, rewarm them in a pan with a lid on them. And if you just very gently rewarm them, they will be fine. 
I did it with the French style mussels a couple days ago and they warmed up perfectly. Chloe even thought they were excellent. So for whatever that's worth, cook extra. Um, in the summertime these make a great salad too. And you can take the broth and then reduce it and then turn that into a vinaigrette. So those are just some other ideas to do what to do with mussels. Inexpensive and really good. Mm -hmm.